Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, this is going to be a little bit of a different tutorial than what I've done before on my channel. So I've been doing my own nails at home for the past probably six months. I love having fake nails. I love the feeling of fake nails, but I don't want to go and spend the money. So I figured I'm going to go get some of my own supplies and I'm going to do my nails at home. And now at first, it was hard. I tried the regular acrylic powder and it just was not working for me. I am not a salon trained nail technician. But then dip powders seemed to come into the market and they were a little bit easier So I thought I'm gonna try these and I'm gonna see what kind of nail quality I can get at home now when I tried them at first I was like, where have these been all of my life? These are amazing now. These are a combination of nail tips dip powder and gel manicure polish so I'm gonna show you the steps of what I do to create these fake nails and they do have that like fake nail sound. They're very thick, they're very hard. Like when I say thick, I don't mean chunky nails. I mean you get that kind of plasticky sound on your nails and they're not easy to break. So if you have thin nails, if you have nails that chip easily, this will be a tutorial for you. So if you wanna see this video and you wanna see how to get these perfect salon nails at home, then just keep watching. So to start this off, you're going to take a cuticle pusher and push all of the cuticles off of your nails. If you leave that skin on your nails, it will cause your dip powder to lift after a while. And then you're going to take a medium grit file and you're just going to very gently file off the shiny layer on top of your nail. So you're not like grinding it down, you're just taking that shiny layer off. So the next thing you're going to want to do is take this Prep B4 from Beauty Secrets. This is a nail dehydrant. And this is what you're going to use to draw all the oils out of your nails so that they're completely dry when you put your dip powder on. So you want to do this working in sections with your dip powder. Don't put it on all your nails right away. I'm going to start today with my thumbnail. So I'm going to clean my thumbnail with some alcohol. And I'm just taking a lint-free pad. Spritz with alcohol. And I'll actually go ahead and clean all my nails so we're getting all the dust off those nails. And then I'll start with my thumb today. So I'm going to take this dehydrant and I'm going to put it on my natural nail. So with the system that I use, I use the ASP Quick Dip and there are three different liquids that I have. This is number two, it's the nail base and top gel. And then after I apply that, I apply the gel activator. And then I also have the brush cleaner. I know Quick Dip has come out with a new system where they have, I think, seven steps. I have the original system and it just is in the basic steps. So I'm also using the Quick Dip powder and this is the crystal clear. So this is like an acrylic powder, but it's a lot easier to use, I find, and it just gives me a better result than using a brush and uh, putting the powder on that way. So I'm just using the crystal clear to help build up a structure to my nail and a base before I do gel. So the very first thing you're going to want to do is take your step number two, and this is our base and top gel. So we're going to take a layer of this and I'm gonna put it directly where my fake tip is connecting to my natural nail. So I'm just taking a line and connecting those two. And don't worry about getting it on your skin. You can take some sort of bamboo stick and just wipe it off your skin. If you leave it on your skin, that powder is going to stick. So then the next step is you take your powder, and you can dip directly into this, but I'm running a little bit low, so I'm taking my cuticle pusher, and I'm gonna take my powder and spread it over top of where we put that base gel. Okay, and then once you feel like it's fully coated, just tap your finger off, and I take a brush, this is just a makeup brush that I'm not using anymore, and you can brush off any excess powder. So that's gonna create a structural layer in between your fake tip and your regular nail. If you don't have fake tips on, you definitely don't need to do this step. The next step now is to take your base coat again, and you're going to put this about three quarters up your nail. So we're not going all the way to the cuticle, we're going about three quarters, and that's gonna help create that more rounded shape. So I'm taking this again. And I'm going to go about to there and then bring it all the way down. Okay, 
and we're trying to get it in a nice even layer because if you have any buildup of product you will have a lot more powder stick to that spot. And then we're going back in with the powder and we're going to do that same step. Brushed all that dip powder off and then we're going to take our brush and again brush the excess off. So we're going to do this a few more times. I'm going to take my base gel again and now this time I'm going all the way up to the cuticle and just leaving a hairline between the product and my cuticle. So I'm going fairly close but not touching. And again, take your little stick, clean up around. You can even go right into that cuticle there to make sure nothing's touching. And then we're just doing the powder again. And then we're going to tap that off, brush it off. And you could stop here. You could just have kind of a basic nail. I think I'm gonna do one more layer because I do like to file mine down after I'm finished. So I'm basically just doing the exact same step that I just did. I'm going all the way up to the cuticle and just going over it. Okay, now there's two more things you have to do to make sure your nail is set completely. So this is your also your top gel. So you're taking this again as your last step without adding any more powder and you're gonna go over everything. Now I like to let that dry just a little bit before I go in with step three, which is the gel activator, which will make your nail actually hard. So I let that dry a little bit because if I put it on right away, it mixes in with this brush and makes this brush really hard. So I'm gonna go to my next nail and I'm gonna complete the exact same steps using the top and base coat and the powder. And then when I've finished that nail, I'll come back and I will do the gel activator on top of this nail. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of my fingernails using the exact same steps. And then we are just moving on to filing and doing the gel manicure. Okay, so the next part after we have the quick dip on our nails is to file them down and shape them into a nice nail shape and then to put the gel polish, whatever you're going to use for gel polish, on top of your nails. I feel like when you shape your nails with a file, and I have three files here, I have a fine grit file, a medium and coarse grit file, and then another medium and coarse grit file, but this one is shaped more like a moon, and then also a very fine sanding block. So once you use these files on your nails, this is what really turns the nail into a nice shape and makes it look like it's professionally done. At this point in time, my nails don't look amazing. I will let you see what they look like up close. I obviously have some discoloration underneath my nail because I have done colored dip powders before this. Now I also have a nail file that I got from Amazon. This is the JSDA Power nail file. It's just an e-file, the JD700, and I personally this is the first nail file I've ever tried, but I think it's amazing. I'm not a nail technician, I don't use professional stuff, but this thing that I got from Amazon for 50 bucks is pretty good. I also bought some carbide bits that go along with it, so these are these golden bits on the end. They have very sharp tips to them, but they're also rounded. So when they're rounded like this, it means that you're able to get right into your cuticle without harming the skin around your cuticle. So this kind of bit is awesome for just shaping and filing down any excess powder that you have on your nails. So as we're going into filing and starting to shape them and make them look professional, we're gonna start with this fine 
carbide bit. I will list everything that I've purchased down below so you guys can buy the same things that I have. And I personally recommend these products. I think they are great and I have tried them for the past six months. So it has been a long trial period of testing the drill, testing the bits, and seeing if they work on my nails. So this is the electric file component and what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn it on. You can hear the drill drill going, but I'm going to have it turned on to forward because I'm working on my left hand first. And then I'm just going to put it up about maybe halfway, a little bit less. So you can hear the file. It's going pretty loud. We don't want it too, too fast. If it's too fast, it will burn your nail, but we need it fast enough that it's not going to stop on the nail. So what I'm going to do is with this fine drill bit, I'm going to take my nails and I'm just going to lightly shape them. So I'm going in a moon shape so you get that curve over the nails. And then when I get close to the cuticle on the nails, I'm really making sure it looks like my natural nail is blended right into where we put the dip powder. So you'll see as I'm going on my nails, I'm just lightly filing in a half circular motion. And I'm just using the body of the barrel, so that's the middle of the barrel, to get rid of any of that excess lumpy bumpiness. And then to get into the cuticle, I'm going to angle my bit and just get right into that cuticle and smooth it down. Now because this is a carbide bit, it is going to remove a lot of the products that you've already put on your nails, so I'm not going to go too heavy with this bit. I will also take it and just thin out the ends of the nails, but the majority of my filing is going to be done with this file right here. This is what's going to help me shape the nails and going to help me really get that nice smooth layer on the nails. This is more so just to help remove any lumps on the nails. So once I feel like the acrylic nail is kind of meshed into my natural nail and it's kind of hard to see where the two come together, then that's when I'm gonna stop using the drill and I'm going to leave it how it is and then move on to filing it with my hand files. So I'm gonna go through and do the rest of my nails on this hand. And again, I'm just removing any kind of lumpy bits that are harder to remove with a hand file. Now I would also recommend, you can see all of these bits flying in front of me, I would recommend a face mask, which I'm actually gonna put on right now so you're not breathing in those dust particles and then if you have a, a set of eyeglasses or protective eyeglasses those would also be helpful as well so the biggest part about shaping your nails is you want to look directly onto the barrel of your nail and make sure you're getting that semicircle shape so I'm looking straight on and I'm just gonna take my e-file and smooth out any spot that looks like it's still a little bit chunky. So that looks pretty good. The next step is to take your medium or coarse grit nail file. So this one is medium on this side and coarse grit on this side. I'm gonna take the medium side and I'm going to start shaping my nails. Now I'm gonna do this again in a half circular motion. So from this side of the nail, I'm going up, around, and up again. So I don't want to go too much on the top like this because that's really going to make your nail flat. Now when I look at my nail, I can tell where I've filed because where I've filed will be not shiny. The parts that are unfiled will still be a little bit shiny. So I know where I need to go back in with my file and I know where my ridges are. So I'm going to take my file and I'm going to do this until I don't see any shiny parts in my nail. And again, you can look down the barrel of your nail and just make sure it's all shaped nicely. You might want to go make your ends of your nail a little bit thinner. And then once you feel like you've shaped it nicely, so you have a nice structured nail where from the cuticle it's thin and it comes up a little bit and then goes out to the tip of your nail, then you can shape your shape. And this is 
complete personal preference. I like to have my nails a little bit squoval, so square oval. So what I do is I just take my file and I file the sides of my nails. And then I'll file the ends of my nails into a square. And then once I feel like it's the shape that I'll want it, that I want it, I'll just kind of take the edges of the nails and soften them. So once my, sh my nail is the shape that I want it, I just go over it like this and take any edge off of the very tip of the nail and then it's pretty much good to go. So from there with the medium grit file when you feel like you've sanded it all out and it's kind of the thickness that you want it, you're going to take a fine grit file and you're going to really just sand down the nail with this, take out any scratches and then once you feel like it's pretty fine and pretty smooth then you can take your yellow sanding block and just make sure it's all completely smooth before you put on your gel polish. Okay, so the next portion of the nails is to do a gel manicure. And with a gel manicure, you need some sort of LED or UV light. So I have this one that I ordered off of Amazon, and it is a perfect LED light. It dries my nails in a good amount of time. Madame Glam, which is the brand of gel polish I will be talking about today, also has an LED light similar to this one. But in the package that they sent me, which was so kind of them to send me some gel polishes, they sent me this travel. LED light. Now because I like to do my nails a few at a time, I personally don't like to use this travel light because this is more so for just one nail at a time and I like to get it done quickly. I received their gel polishes in the mail and I've been trying them out. They sent the regular formula color in a more which is a red color and then they also sent me their smoothie gel collection in the shade fling swing so this is more of like a jelly gel polish and I've been trying these two out for the past two months so so I have a pretty good idea of how I feel about them and how they wear on my nails this gel polish is better than any gel polish you can buy from a store. And we have our washed nails ready to go. Now with their base coat, this is what we're going to use first. You're going to do a very thin layer of this on your nails and then put it under the LED or UV light. Really depends if you have a UV or LED light. If you have an LED light, you're gonna put them under the light for about 30 seconds. If you have a UV light, you're going to put them under the light for about a minute and 30 seconds. So basically what I'm doing is taking the gel coat, doing one nice layer over my nails, putting it under the light, letting it set, and then going in with my color. And it's very important with this base coat that you don't put it on your skin. And if you do put it on your skin, you're going to take your bamboo stick and wipe it off. Because if you put that on your skin and then you put it under the light, it is is going to harden to your skin. So going into the actual colors of gel polish, I'm taking the red and I'm going to do two coats of that. With two coats you get a very opaque color so you don't need to do any more than that. But with the jelly polish you do need to do three coats because it is a little bit more translucent. And you want to make sure you're placing all of those little sparkly dots all over the nail because they can clump a little bit. And then I'm just curing those and putting on a top coat, wiping off any part that got on the skin, curing it again, and then they are pretty much done. When you take them out of the UV or LED light for the last time, they will be a little bit sticky, so you need to take some sort of soak off cleanser and just give them a quick wipe to get rid of that sticky layer that's on top of them. Okay, so now we have a freshly gel manicure set at home in the comfort of your own home and it didn't cost you $60. Now I know I have a few products in this video that will definitely cost you a little bit up front, like the nail file and like the UV light. In my opinion, those are things that are a little bit of an investment up front so that you can do these things at home and save yourself a little bit of money in the long run. I absolutely love these Madame Glam gel polishes. I have tried other brands. I've tried the China Glaze jellies and they chip off on my nails at about 
two weeks. These bad boys have lasted me four weeks at a time. So these are really, really, really great gel polishes. And I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you liked this tutorial, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.